<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to our first episode of May Monkey Madness, our series in which we review each of the Planet of the Apes films, starting with the Caesar trilogy that started in 2011 with Rise of the Planet of the Apes. With me today I have... <laughs> <laughs> now you see here folks if i were to call them monkeys that would technically get me canceled but since they are making noises i'm at a predicament <laughs> i'm about to get a noise complaint <laughs> are you actually ready to start talking about the fucking movie yo i'm ready this movie came out in 2011 um, I didn't see this film in theaters. I actually saw it after it came out on DVD. I got the DVD, and me and my brother watched the hell out of this movie as kids. We had a lot of fun. For me, I grew up on the Planet of the Apes movies, in that my favorites are Escape from Planet of the Apes and Conquest of the Planet of the Apes from the original 60s films. I actually never seen the original, original film, but I know so much about it, like just through osmosis of pop culture that I can follow along with anyone about it. And I gotta say, uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, after I saw it, like shot up to be one of my favorites. And as we go along in this series of movies, they, each movie becomes my favorite. This one was my favorite. The next one comes out, I like it more than the first one. And then the third one comes out, and it's my favorite movie of all time. But we're not talking about those movies. We're going to talk about the movie that started it all. Um, this movie is about a chimpanzee named Caesar who gets tested on from birth. Uh, this <clears throat> drug that is designed to help cure Alzheimer's and dementia. And uh, over the period of him growing up, he gets smarter and smarter. He basically becomes more human than ape. Then something happens and he gets sent to the pretty much like a chimpanzee ape zoo in which he has to now live with his own kind who are much dumber than him. And he has to figure out a way to get out and get back to the life he had. Or he thinks he wants to get back to the life he had. It is a the haves versus the have-nots. Just with intelligence instead of wealth and power. And uh, once one gets intelligence, they all start to get intelligence. And yeah, they basically just have a uh, insurrection throughout the movie and take over. Well, they actually, they don't even take over anything. They just try to run away. That's at least the story of the film. By the way, this could be all open spoilers. This movie's been out more than 13 years now. So it's fair to say we could be open and spoiler talk about it. So yeah, I want you guys to start from the clips you have seen. What things stood out to you about this movie? I mean, for me, the like 2011 CGI, I guess when I look back, like comparing to like the first ever Transformers that came out way back then as well, mm-hmm. is how well the CGI is mm-hmm. from back then. Yeah. And then kind of comparing it to the flaws that we've had in recent years, that's kind of yeah. embarrassing. Oh, yeah. I think from the beginning, they knew that, well, I've heard different stories about how in the beginning they were wanting to do practical effects, but then they were like, eh, it looked too weird in the modern day cameras. So they're like, let's do CG. And when they did CG, they ha- they went to the one person who they knew would make this work. Andy Serkis plays Caesar, who also played Gollum in Lord of the Rings. He is perhaps the guy who made motion capture popular and an art form that should be taken seriously. Because he absolutely makes this character, Caesar, shine through. Even though you don't actually see the actor, you just see this chimpanzee basically performing and acting with somewhat human emotions but yeah i agree this the cg in this film looks great there's some moments that look a lot better than others in my opinion like there's some moments where like eh, they look a little bit rubbery there but in my opinion this movie does hold up today and then yeah it is the, the effects in the film are incredible yeah and then kind of continuing i guess the really main scenes that I saw were the uh, prison escape and the bridge scene. Those were, holy fuck, if you told me that was a 2011 film, I would not believe you. Yep. 
the effects overall, like we're, we're going to gush about them. And like, yeah, there, there's, I am not a CG artist, so I don't know anything about technical. I don't know any technical elements about CG. All I know is that this movie pioneered a lot of techniques in which they're not always on green screen. They're actually on sets just with, you know, motion capture suits and stuff. Yeah, I saw that in the video uh, you sent me. It's like mm-hmm. all of it on a set, and then when they're in mocap suits. I think all the apes are played by actors. I think they all are. Yeah, like, I don't know if there are any named actors in there, but, like, they all do a really good job mimicking ape movements. I know they have, like, these devices on their wrists to make them look longer so that they can run like a chimpanzee. Man, I would I would love to be the guy who played the gorilla. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Oh, yeah, I guess I really kind of forgot the preferences. Um, I have not seen this movie. I've just seen clips, so I'm saying I'm just putting it out there. I know I know nothing about this movie besides oh. clips. Okay. I'm gonna put that out. There. I did not. We did not say that. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just referencing that now. I am a complete blank slate to this movie and the series in general. Besides monkey. Yeah, same. Like I legit thought they trained these gorillas and orangutans and what? chimpanzees, but. Are you, are you serious? No. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, right. Yen? <laughs> Not I'm going to be honest. Well, first I'll say I agree with y'all with like how well the CGI um looks, especially like during the scene. Um, Like the clips you sent me, my favorite had to be like uh, the, the ones with the gorillas, right? And them yeah. like, you know, flipping stuff and attacking the helicopter. But I just realized like how racist I am after. <laughs> <Jesus> <laughs> All right, if, since you both haven't really seen the movie and just seen clips, what would sell you on this movie and the series well, overall? I have a quick question. Mm-hmm. Is this tied in to, like, the old Planet of the Apes films that I've seen? Is there any sort of continuity with that, or is it, like, a no. reboot? This is a complete reboot. There is okay. There's only references to the first film. Like, if you... Uh, like one of the characters played by Malfoy, his character's name is named after two characters from the original film. So it was like a Easter egg there. There's a moment in the film where you see like a rocket ship go up in the space, or NASA sends out a rocket ship up in the space. That is a reference mm-hmm. to the first film in which um, astronauts crash land on this planet and it's run by apes, and they're like, "What's going on here?" And the twist is. They went through something in space that shot them forward in time, like a a very long time in the future. But yeah, there's just references to the original film. Caesar is technically in the original films in uh, Escape. Well, he's only a baby in Escape. Um, He's a main character in Conquest. And then he's also a main character in Battle for the Planet of the Apes, the original in the original 60s, 70s movies. But they don't. It's not a remake of those films. This is its own story. They wanted to tell a story in that is kind of like your rebellion kind of film, where you follow your main character and have him go through the lows of the lows. It's ultimately a Moses story, if you really think about it. If we want to get biblical up in this bitch, like as a baby sent to a home that he wasn't, that he never really belonged to, he then finds out who his true heritage is. Then has to lead his people to the promised land. Caesar's Jewish. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jesus Christ. Technically doesn't believe in that. (laughs) Oh, goddamn. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. uh, Caesar Christ. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. I wouldn't go that far. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> for many reasons, but uh, it's it has elements of Moses' story. It's a story about the the oppressed rebelling against the oppressors. Let's just say that. And to be fair, like the original Planet of the Apes films always had an element of social commentary, especially with racism. Conquest has an entire monologue dedicated to that uh that idea entirely i'll link it down below it's a, it's a great scene but um yeah i think even the original this is like this this whole series is based off like a french book and they just went with their own direction with the films and then ultimately 
with this these new movies, they don't really do anything with that original book. At least from, from what I know of. I would say that these newer films are the ones I'd recommend to people more. Because if you go back and watch the original, original films, there's a lot of elements that are incredibly dated. Like Charlton Heston in his original films is incredibly racist. Oh. <laughs> like, one of the biggest quotes from the original is, Get your hands off me, you damn dirty ape. <laughs> Uh, they also homage to it in this film and one of my favorite scenes in the entire film in which uh, Caesar gets the upper hand on Malfoy. I'm just going to call him Malfoy because that's all I know. I know his name is Tom Felton. I know his name. I know that's his name. But I call him Malfoy because that's all he is. He's also a complete piece of shit in this film. He is an asshole. <laughs> but, I loved seeing that film. <laughs> when he's like, get your hands off me, you're, you ape, like, the way he wields the stun baton, it just looks like he's trying to, like, wield a wand. <laughs> just, like, I couldn't take it seriously. It's, like, doing failed. Like, he against, like, a monkey, and then he just gets killed. <laughs> Dude um... fell apart after Hogwarts. <laughs> But going back to what I love about that scene in which, like, uh, Caesar fights back against Tom uh, Malfoy. Just call him Malfoy at this point. Jesus. I love the buildup because throughout most of this film, Caesar doesn't talk. He just does ape noises and sign language. In that one moment where it's a low angle shot looking up, and you just see, like, from the chest, him just say no. Like, I remember in the, like, like watching that on my couch with my family and just, like, jaw agape. Just, holy shit, he just spoke. Because keep in mind, throughout none of the marketing of the film, they never showed anything about these apes talking, just doing noises and looks and, and just screaming. So when you see him completely just saying no, and that be the moment where the tides are turning in that like you guys aren't special anymore we can also talk now like that's awesome there's no other scene in this franchise that is as hype as that moment for me in the orig- in this film because not only is it a callback to the original film and the Dan Dirty 8 part that line in context it has a lot of like racial uh, connotations to it about like you know just how oppressors would oppress people and call them demeaning things and in this moment, they're fighting back and saying no. They have a voice. I don't mean to get political, but these films do have a undertone to them that I really appreciate looking back. Like, because as a kid, I didn't really get that. I was like, monkey, cool. But in as an adult, I I appreciate that. Like this franchise is always having that element to it of the oppressors versus the oppressees. It's a bit difficult to compare any race of people to monkeys. And that's not what I'm saying here. Mm-hmm. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm uh-huh. saying is, it's just, it's kind of like how X-Men has like, uh, elements of racism and homophobia in its franchise. Yet mm-hmm. this one is just a bit more. How do I say mm-hmm. it? Yeah. So that's not what I'm saying here. I just want to make that very clear. Uh-huh. I'm not calling any race of people monkeys. Uh-huh. Cause this film is ultimately about the conflict between the two species because that's really what it is. It's two different species of people. Mm. Of, uh, humans and apes. And yeah, I kind of want to learn about that. Like, why Why is there conflict? Why is there conflict? <laughs> well, it's a bunch of chimpanzees running amok in San Francisco. Uh-huh. The typical Wednesday. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, basically, Caesar and the rest of the apes in that, like... Uh, oh, God. It's not like... A, it's basically like a chimpanzee prison. Because it's not open to the public. So, Caesar basically gets all of his apes out of there after giving them the same virus that uh he was infected with as a young kid or a chimp he when he finds his way back to his house he manages to take a canister of this virus and basically give it to the other apes that's how they gain intelligence so it's just not a bunch of chimpanzees just like uh, growing bananas around uh san francisco these are actually, like, they all have somewhat 
they all have intelligence to an, a degree. Not like, not all of them can talk. They're just more, they have more of a conscious and they're more like cognitive to everything around them so that they can actually problem solve and get out of situations now. And right, right, right. So originally it was to find a cure for Alzheimer's. Yes. Which is deterioration of the brain. Yes. But then the drug ends up enhancing the monkey brain. Yes. Huh? Well, yeah, and actually the, the cruel twist of fate here is uh, the drug that helps make the apes smarter is actually a deadly virus to humans. And at the end of the film, it gets out. Mm. So that's like it, in humans. Yeah, it, 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 like, it gets from one co-worker in one scene in the film. He's like operating on a, on a chimpanzee. And the thing freaks out and cuts his suit open and he gets some of the virus on himself. And he starts to like, you know, flu-like sy- symptoms. He starts coughing. Oh, starts bleeding so his... COVID was monkey. Yeah, pretty much. What a cool twist of fate. Yeah. It's, also, yeah, it's really scary how close to COVID-19 this virus is. In the symptoms, at least. And uh, we'll get more into the impact of that in the second film because the second film really deals with the outbreak of it all so yeah like yeah the the virus made to help cure alzheimer's ultimately doomed the world As a, again fuck James Franco. wait what did he do he's the guy who pushed this drug along oh okay i thought i thought you were saying fuck you to like the actual person oh yeah yeah, yeah that too <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to have to research that later. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to talk about it now, but yeah, fuck you, James Franco. Yeah, uh, do you guys have anything else you want to ask me about this film? Like, on how you want me to sell it to you? Like, what do I like about it? I mean, I guess but how it leads into the next film, because clearly it's a, the first one, and I'm, like, wondering just how strong, like, uh, from the clips and scene and what you've been talking about, like, how does that lead into the next movie? Without spoiling. Um, without spoiling <laughs> anything that happens. In, well, I guess I could say one thing about the next film that's in the trailers and the marketing and on the posters and everything like that. The next film is a time skip, like a significant time skip. The next film is more of a, like a post-apocalypse film, kind of like your The Road or your Walking Dead. But the element of like it's very little humanity left – and they're just trying to get by. So yeah, that's all I'll say regarding that. I won't give any like plot details away, but like especially with Caesar's character in particular. Rise of the Planet of the Apes is stylistically and tonally very different from the next two films. The next two films are its own like tone and feel and setting. This one is like still while humans are on top and everything is going well and we just basically see the start and the, again the rise of the planet of the apes you don't actually get to see how they conquer the whole world like that's not the pl- point of this film this film is a very character focused movie about this one chimp who managed to lead an insurrection and get his people to a better place so yeah, that's basically all I can say is that the, like, I, I don't want to talk too much about Dawn. That's going to be for next week's video. I guess I don't really have any more questions about going into super deep spoilers. So, Do you have any questions about this film in particular? No, that's what I'm saying. Like The question I have is kind of a deep spoiler. For this film? Yeah. Well, we're, this, this is a retrospective, so we can do a bit more deep spoilers. So just let me, what is it you have to say? I mean, we kind of touched on it, but I'm, like, still a little kind of, I guess, iffy on the whole motive of human versus ape. Okay. Um, well, when you're... Okay, there's two different viewpoints of the human versus... There's Caesar's point of view in the ape sanctuary. When Caesar was back at home, he was only seen as, like, a pet never his own person and when he tries to become someone and be protective of his owner he gets thrown in this prison like at a point he just refuses to go back because he realizes that 
his people are being tortured and he needs to do something about it. That is the side of human versus ape where they want to get out of that prison. The other side you can look at is the laboratory that the virus comes from. Like there's a bunch of uh, apes that are being experimented on. One in particular that plays a very, very important role in the next film. And like that's them rebelling against being experimented on and being treated as like just lab rats. Oh, this is just a liberation movie. Yeah, again, th like the tagline for this movie, I think it's also going to be in the, uh, the video itself, is evolution becomes revolution. Okay. And, I get it. Uh, and so, yeah, there's no real, like, the apes are not, like, malicious against humans. Like, there's a point where uh, one of the other ape wranglers is getting, like, beat on. Like, he's just getting his shit rocked by these apes, like, just, and you, like, like five chimpanzees and bonobos are just beating the hell out of this guy, and Caesar just says, go away, and he just puts the guy in prison. They're not being malicious, they're just trying to be free. There's only a couple moments in this film where apes actually go out of their way to kill a human, and it's with the, I don't know if you saw the scene where, uh, uh, the guy in the helicopter gets put, pu pushed off the edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and that ape in particular, he was tested on by that guy, oh. or that guy tested on that ape, or told other people to test on that <laughs> ape, and he always recognized that guy as the guy who was torturing him. Like you notice that that ape has like a scar on his eye, like scarring across his body. Like he's he's a scary looking bonobo. So yeah, that's the only part in the film where an ape goes out of their way to actually kill a human. Out of like in like malicious intent, but other than that, everything is like self defense or a way to get out of the city. Okay. Yeah. So I won't again. If you want more of the ape versus human conflict, those are in the sequels. Oh, so that's why the trailer looked like like it looked it reminded me of the Last of Us gameplay, the way the world looked. Yeah. Do you have any questions for me regarding this film? I was going to say, is Caesar the only one that can talk? But I feel like maybe there will be another one in the next newest movie or whatever. Yeah. Um, I won't go into who, but yeah. Ooh, interesting. Basically, like, Caesar already has a one-up on all these apes. Like, he's had years to get accustomed to not only being, being human-like and that he stands upright a lot. Uh -huh. So you see a lot of the other apes catch up pretty quick. In the next film, <laughs> I, can, I just imagine an orangutan piloting a Black Hawk helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, you know, they're in military fatigues and they're driving a tank. Mm, um, okay. Keep that thought in mind. Ooh. Yep. More, that's going to be for the next video. But, yeah. Um, I'm just, yeah, I love this film. I'm going to say that after every film in this franchise. I think they're it's a really good uh, start to a trilogy, but also they they went into this movie without a trilogy in mind. They were just like, we just want to tell a very good origin story to the Planet of the Apes, and we have no idea what we're going to do for a sequel. Like, we're not even thinking about a sequel. Uh, you've pretty much sold me. I really want to see these uh, movies now. It's kind of hard to find this this particular movie on streaming. But you can find this movie streaming on Hulu. And for the other two films that we're going to be uh, talking about next week and the week after that are on HBO Max and Hulu as well. Sweet. So yeah, if you, I highly recommend you guys see those films. And this one too. I do think it's really good. Thank you everybody for listening to this review of <coughs> Eyes of the Planet of the Apes. This is our first video of 4 and May Monkey Madness. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say. Bye. <laughs>